In the late 1800s, Bourne was a thriving community. Since that time and in the last 10 years that we've been there, Bourne has settled back into the woods, going back into the ground from which it came. So I thought I'd share some of that in this video as we say goodbye to our cabin. Sassy, I'll come and get you at no, sweetie. Bourne was originally called Cracker or Cracker City until Jonathan Bourne, U.S. Senator, moved to Oregon and bought the Eureka and Excelsior Mines in 1899. Massive load discoveries of gold and silver brought in $8 million from 1894 through 1916. Here's the old shop up above Bourne. It fell down a few years ago. By the 1890s, mines like Bourne's were more valuable to big industrial mining ventures than to small-time owners. Mining concerns were springing up on stock exchanges all over the world at this time. Financiers in London were buying mines in Oregon sight unseen and making substantial profits. This tunnel is no longer obviously being used, but you can still see the tracks coming out. There's Castle Rocks. Many had dreams of striking it rich in the gold mines, and one man, F. Wallace White, took advantage of those fantasies. It's the oldest building left standing in Bourne, and it's on its last legs. I'm surprised it made it through the winter. They've let the cows come in during the summer, so it's not going to last very much longer. White moved to Bourne when the mines were already drying up. Rather than mining himself, he bought a newspaper press up the mountain. White produced not one, but two newspapers out of Bourne. One, a generally honest local periodical for the people of his town, and the other, a flagrantly false paper for national consumption. With a 7.5 million stock offering, White launched the Samson Company Limited with offices in London, New York, and Bourne. He then put on a show for investors at his mansion with its formal dining room and ballroom. After swindling millions of dollars, F. Wallace White fled town, leaving everything behind but his misbegotten money. The law eventually caught up with him, though, while he was operating another mail fraud scheme in a different part of the country. 